water can be tricky. It's not always coming in where you think it is, or you fix one hole and it finds the next, right? Get in there as quickly as possible. Make sure that it's a long-term solution. And if it's something that's a systemic problem, making sure we find ways to address that before it's a problem in the next unit or for the next tenant. We began seeing that leaks, uh, though, didn't always originate in roofs. As we progressed and did more and more of these investigations, we started learning that there were other things that leaked as well. Windows, exterior wall cladding of various types, masonry. As I've evolved into a building enclosure consultant, uh, those performance issues have you know, run the gamut from condensation related issues to water leakage to rotted exterior sheathing to everything in between. If you can avoid a problem early, the cost or professional fees associated with that can be so much less than trying to rectify an issue after the building's been occupied. There was an incident where a zoo had contacted us. They had been having problems uh, with leaking into the chimpanzee holding facility, and they were advised that if they didn't fix it, they were going to lose the chimpanzees. What we found is that the building had never been waterproofed. It was simply concrete, and concrete cracks. Concrete allows water to come through. We had to be honest with our client and explain to them what we have to do is excavate everything. We have to expose this building, and then we have to waterproof it, then we have to create drainage planes, and then we can backfill. It wasn't an easy conversation to have, but it was a conversation that they needed to hear. We were hired to do a, a large construction project in Wisconsin. We reviewed the documents and pointed out a couple key details that we thought might result in condensation uh, occurring within the assembly, which might leak uh, to the to the interior. We documented it and sent that through to the design team. They didn't think that was necessary and they didn't do that. Well, they built the building and now they have to tear out uh, quite a bit of work uh, in order to rectify the situation to probably about a cost of about $150,000 to $180,000. In addition to the cost, they've also had to delay the opening of the building. Early iterations of waterproofing were primarily based on uh, petroleum products developing newer, safer, and more sustainable materials just makes sense. Today we have a broad array of different materials that are less harmful to the environment, less harmful to the applicators, and still suitable for uh, great service on buildings. Worked at a very high-end residential home out in Long Island where they recently replaced their windows and, and the window replacement was about two million dollars. They were having problems all over the place and, and uh, we were called to come in do an investigation, and through that we determined that uh, just by popping off a, a beauty plate, beauty cap, uh, and installing some sealant at a certain location, we were able to solve all their problems. And instead of having to rip out all these windows and destroy their home, it was a creative, easy solution that you know they were able to get done in, in you know a few weekends. I'm working on a four-story condo building with balconies that were not waterproofed right, and then the client paid to have them retrofitted. About four years ago, we're now just about to retrofit them again and do what should have been done at the time of original construction. Once this is done, it'll last 30 years. Both the original construction and the retrofit were done without an IBAC consultant. So we brought that value to them on this final phase and they're pleased.